and we are officially live. It's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Man, I'm stoked today. Dan, we were talking before the show, man. You are uh, definitely one of my tribe. We don't get a lot of grinders on here. We don't get a lot of people who are willing to to uh, to make the calls to uh, to grind it out all day uh, and build a business on that. But uh, certainly, I'm excited to be talking with you today. Um, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So one thing that stood out to me when Brett emailed me about you uh, was that you've only been in the business for about two years. You're a young guy. You're 24 years old. And uh, you're on track to sell about $18 million in your second full year of real estate. So before we get into that, though, tell me a little bit about you, man. Where where where, where do you come from? How did you get into real estate? Yeah, I mean, um, originally grew up suburbs of Chicago on the North Shore up there. Ended up going out to school, University of Maryland and College Park. Um, ended up making connection, actually, someone on our team, Eric Goldfarb. You know, brought us in from there, kind of connected me with Brad as they were starting the team. You know, a year ago it was four of us. Now we're we're quite bigger. Um, but how I got into real estate, you know, loved the industry, really thought about the whole passive income. And, you know, coming out of school, they're always telling you go straight into that corporate America, get a stable job, all that good yeah. stuff. Um, luckily, I have the background where, you know, I, I was able to take a couple risks and and bet on myself, which is definitely my favorite part of the job and the industry and everything like that. Um, so that's kind of what brought me into the real estate world is just seeing the opportunity that can come from a ton of different angles. Yeah. And, and I think what's cool about someone like you and, and we, um, we, we love new agents here too. Uh, the reason why we like new agents is because they don't have a lot of bad habits. And um, if, if you're, hu- if, if you're hungry, you're, you're humble and you're, you know, you're, you're um you're 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 willing to learn. I think that you you can't get a better agent than someone that's new. Um, so for you, um, are you living? Are you still in Chicago now, or are you actually living in Jersey? No, so I'm actually living in the city in Manhattan, um, and then doing a little reverse commute. Still ten minutes door to door, so easy there. You know, living with a couple of buddies of mine, people who a lot of people my age still in the city haven't made that transition out to Hoboken, Jersey City, to Brooklyn. Um, but again, just kind of originally senior year of college, sat down with Brett and Eric and just right off the bat had a great vibe to them. You know, there's a lot of people in the real estate industry who are not exactly the most you know, or the best type of people. I'll, I'll say that. But, yeah. you know, you could just read them right off the bat. Hardworking, great guys. I knew what, that I would get into just a good role for the team, have great mentors above me. Um, and honestly, I owe majority of the credit to them just steering me in the right path. Okay. And those are great guys to learn from. Uh, I know that for sure. And, and so, uh, so for you, 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 obviously you live in Manhattan. You, do you have, I, I would venture to say you probably don't have a big network there. Do you? Um, not huge as in, I mean, I don't have a big network in people buying, selling, whatever, just in the sense of being 24, you know, not yeah. many people are, are putting down, you know, good money for property. But, you know, all the people I went to school with, definitely a bigger network that will continue to grow as I grow as a person, age-wise, stuff like that. Um, but no, no, like, sphere of influence, nothing nothing along those lines. Yeah, and that, that didn't hold you back, obviously, at all, which is is really cool. So what, what I'm getting at with that is I know some of the younger people I've talked to is that, you know, they get into real estate and – you know, they'll come in and say, well, you know, none of the people my age are buying houses. It's like, you know, OK, so, you know, people try to they, they try to make excuses for why, you know, they, they wouldn't be able to be successful in real estate. And uh, one thing I know about you is, is you've not made that excuse at all. In fact, you know, you've come in, um, you've taken instruction, you're learning from some of the best and you're making it work. So um, tell me when you got into real estate. So 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 rewind real quick. You got you got your license I, like. One thing you mentioned before too, it and it and I'm always curious about this is because like my mom, she always encouraged me. Hey, you know, you go to college, you know, you get a job with with a, with a Fortune 500 company that's got benefits, you know, and everything is safe, right? And yeah. the reality of it is, 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 is you and I both know that essentially what college is 
is it's a it's a breeding ground for corporate America, right? They're training people to go into a corporate job. Oh, and while right. that works for corporate America, what it doesn't work for is, is entrepreneurs, right? And so you you have obviously an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, you want to go out and, and build a business, something that works for you and your family, um, no matter uh, no matter how the the economy is going. And so and and I and I I think that's great, man. I think there there's a lot of 24 year olds that would not make that decision, myself included, um, because I didn't really I didn't I didn't see the writing on the wall until I was in my late 30s. And I wish I would have seen it when I was your age. But we've got a girl in here right now who we have working as an ISA while she's getting her license. She's 21 years old, man. The girl comes in and just crushes the phones. And she reminds me a lot of what you're doing. You never came up with any limiting beliefs. Obviously, you're going to go out and sell about $18 million as, as a 24-year-old. I don't want to say kid because I don't want to take anything away from it. <laughs> But I mean, the reality of it is like you, you've got all the excuses in the book. Um, yeah. So tell me, like, I, I know people watching this, you know, are going to they're, they're asking, well, you know, how is he doing that? And, and so there's a couple hurdles you got to get over. Number one is you're a new agent. Number two is you're 24 years old. And number three is nobody likes to make phone calls. And you've somehow been able to overcome all three of those. So let, let's let's start with the first one, which I know why everybody is here. Let's talk about your phone call routine. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, calling, you know, I'll be in the office 7.30, 7.45, getting situated. Probably won't start hitting the phones until 8.30-ish. Um, I originally started going after the 8 o'clock. That'll work for expireds and stuff like that. But I'm actually not calling any expired FISBOs, nothing in that world, because there's so many other people going after it. And that wall is just so strong in front of them. Um, so I'm doing more of just a blanket, you know, pull every number on every street and you're calling up and down. Doesn't matter if it's multifamily, single family, condo, commercial, wherever it can be, that's what we're going to do. So probably start calling about 830, 845 at the latest dial until about one or two o'clock. Um, it's, it's repetitious boredom, put it, some music on in the background, put the headset on, uh, really get going, make sure that I have all the numbers and it's not like, you know, I'm pulling numbers in the morning to get going and, and get it into the dialer. We're using Mojo doing a three line dialer on that. Um, and we just have, you know, I'm just going to pick a street and we're going to go right down it. And, and again, you're going to have tons of different types of properties. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really matter if it's something that's not in my scope, like, Personally, I don't work with buyers. I don't work with the home buyer. Um, I only work with sellers, listings, that, that 18 million plus number is only yeah. on the listing side. Um, anything on the home buyer's you know, point of view, I'm going to refer out to a partner of ours, you know, take a big on it, stuff like that. But it's really from, I'd say, 830, 845 to about one or two is cold calling, getting new business and, and feeding the CRM. Um, there's so many people out there who don't have a CRM, which is mind blowing to me. Um, and it's getting that email, putting it into a CRM, getting them on market updates, showing them what's selling similar to their property. Again, if it's a multifamily from the investment side of things, if it's a condo, it doesn't matter. At least they're going to see what price point they'll be falling in. Okay. Um, obviously, it is different from, you know, property to property, um, but it, it's feeding the CRM. It's a living, you know, creature, I guess, so to speak. And yeah. You've always got to be pumping into it. Um, I think consistency is absolutely huge for me i didn't put any properties on the market for the first eight months i think it was so i went dry for eight months kept my head down drove brett a little crazy asking him why is this not working yeah. um but trusted the process and and knew that i was out working anyone else just waiting to see the benefits of it and um it definitely worked so i'll keep going with my day Two o'clock comes around i'll probably go you know get lunch at the gym whatever it is clear my mind shut off mm -hmm. I'll take my work phone in there, stuff like that. Cut about three, respond to emails, calls, texts, whatever you need, keep deals alive. Starting at about four o'clock, then I'll just do follow up calls. Um, I'm touching base with any property owner, whether they're ready to sell, whether they're not. Touching base at a minimum once a quarter. I'm trying to get them on the phone. If they don't answer first, then they're going to get an email um, just so they see my name. So they're getting the branding from our CRM twice a month with market updates of what's selling similar. And then they're getting a personal, 
a um, little deeper dive once a quarter at minimum. Okay. All right. So ton to unpack there. I um, want to start with Mojo. Uh, for yeah. those of you who don't know what Mojo is, Mojo is a dialing system in which you can uh, either upload data or uh, they have um, they have a couple different resources where you can either do for sell by owner or expireds, or you can do mapping data. And I would assume that's what you're doing. You're, you're actually going in and mapping areas that you want to call into, and then they're uploading the data into the system for you, and then you're calling that data. Yep, exactly right. Okay. And, yeah, so uh, numbers are all set, um, and they're all going. The goal is to be the first one to contact them. You know, mm -hmm. It's not going to be that fourth person on an expired listing that's just going to drive them even more crazy. It's a, it's a lighter touch in a much longer game. It's not now business. Yeah, and typically those conversations are fairly easy to have um, because no one else is calling them. I wrote down before you and I actually jumped on here, is there are some there are some distinct advantages to circle prospecting. Um, number one being that there's little or or no competition at all when calling uh, circle when, when calling into neighborhoods, and then um, the cost associated with circle prospecting isn't very high either because you know it requires more elbow grease, and um, and, and so I think that people. I've always had a belief, Danny, that there's that to run a perfectly balanced real estate business. There's, there's, I call it the law of 33. 33% of your business should be represented by your sphere of influence. 33.3% of your business should be represented by inbound leads. So that's internet leads for sell by owners, expires. And then 33.3% should be represented by outbound, which is the way you've decided to build your foundation. And yeah. as you, what'll happen in your business is as you start to make more money, you can reinvest in your business and add in some of those additional platforms that maybe don't require as much work, still require work, but don't require as much work. So right now your plane is your plane is in takeoff mode, right? You're you're expending totally. the most amount of fuel right now because you're getting your plane off the ground into the air. And then when you get your plane into the air, then you can dial the throttle back a little bit by adding in some of these additional lead resources. Is that kind of the plan? Yeah, that's exactly it. And it's really, you know, being in the team structure, it's leaning on the system. So you're have yet to be to closing. Don't ever plan on it. Um, you know, try to eliminate everything that takes up my time or yeah. the normal agent's time, I guess, in a day. And that's things like showing property. I'm just not going to do that. You know, yeah. think weekends, uh, I'll be on my phone, you know, calling, texting, responding to people, keeping, you know, that plane, so to speak, level. Um, but I'm not going into the office, I'm not showing property. Those are my two days that I could do my own thing. But Monday through Friday, it's game time. And, you know, that's starting 12 hour days, making sure that we're doing it the right way. But as you said, you know, take off pillar one, get that as strong and sturdy as possible, and then add more income pillars, obviously, as time goes on. Would you be tempted if you got like a $2 million buyer that was ready to go? No, I'm not going. I'll refer it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it, man. He's dedicated. Unless it's an investor who knows what their numbers are and the numbers make sense, and I just got to open up the multi family and show them four, five, six units. Yeah. I'm not going. Okay. I love it, dude. I love it. Secondly, you talked about uh, your CRM. What CRM are you using? Are you using Mojo as the CRM? No, we're using Boomtown. So I'm, I'm using both. Um, I'm keeping my follow ups just through Mojo so I could see it. The calls are right there, ready to go. Okay. Um, but boom, John's how I'm tracking everything. Okay. So you, if you get like, I assume you're looking for nurtures, right? When you call, you're looking for yeah. nurture. And, 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 it's, and just so everybody watching knows what a nurture is, a nurture is somebody that you get in touch with and you identify, obviously their contact information, their email, um, their, their selling cycle. In other words, when they might be selling and then their motivation for selling. And then if they're willing to hire an agent, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you'll probably get, you've definitely got the email. Well, email is most important because it's not going yeah. into your CRM without it. You right. have the number already, you have the name, you have the property address. Um, but the other two on the latter half of that, that's a longer game. It's harder to drag that out right on that first cold call. It's yeah. that follow up in two months, three months that you can start diving into the questions. You know, hey, I know you've been seeing the market updates. What's your time frame looking like? Would you be considering any offers at this point? You've got X amount of equity in whatever type of property you have. Let's get rid of this now before the market goes here. Little things like that 
those are those deeper questions are going to be on my follow ups, my initial cold call, initial touch to get the lead into the system. Obviously, you wish you could get the meeting and they'll sell right away, but we all know that's not happening. Um, it, it is that those follow ups, and that's where where the money's made. Okay, so so you're saving the last two questions, whether they're willing to hire you as an agent and whether that what their time frame is for like a later on in the game. You're just essentially what you're looking for is. I want to get I want to get their contact information. I want to get their email first and foremost because that's the only way they're going into my CRM. And the reason why I want to get the email is because I want to be able to drip on them in addition to calling them. And I want to be able to drip on them with quality information in the form of probably uh, sold, neighborhood solds and then a home evaluation, correct? Yeah, so we do a lot of multifamily work out here as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of older owners that have had these properties for so long and they don't even know that they're sitting on something that's worth a mil and a half, two mil, something like that. And just seeing a big number. So we're throwing a property report out at them in that initial email. So I get that email, put it into the system, create a property report, pretty much pull some quick comps. Doesn't take too long, tailor it for their property. Um, and then send that out in my initial email later in the day saying, you know, Hey, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Here's my contact info. Um, and here's a property report as we discuss. Have you like if you find somebody like that, like for me, like I'm, I'm an investor, too. Um, yeah. So my investor hat is always on. But like for me, like, are you looking for like wholesale deals as well? Or are you not? Are you just, that's just something you're not interested in right now? I would. Um, it's definitely been a thought for me as well. Yeah. Um, but it is a different angle on that. Obviously, you're not pitching the I'll get you top dollar for your asset or a deal. You're pitching the I'll get this done quick. Deal. Right. Yeah. And and so like if you if you get a hold of somebody that's sitting on a property that's worth a mil and a half and they they're they don't know and, they, and they're you know, they just tell you, hey, we just want to get rid of it. We want we want, we want like 600 for it. It's like, OK, I'll give you 600 for it. I'll find an investor that's willing right. to pay a million. And, I'll, and then I'll and I'll pocket, you know, the like we're, what, what we we don't have deals that big here. I mean, I mean, I'm in the Midwest. I'm in, you know, Southwest Ohio. Um, so our assignment fees are, are more in the realm of like, you know, 30,000, 20,000, 15,000. But like I'm locking up deals all the time and we're just we're getting them under contract and we're finding somebody that we can assign the contract to. So we're never closing on the deal. We just get an assignment fee at closing and it doesn't take any money or investment to be able to do that. So I'm just wondering if you've thought about that at all. Yeah, absolutely have. Um, I just think there's so much competition on a, in the direct New York City market that yeah. if we went further out in Jersey, more inland, yeah. yes, you have a huge opportunity to do that. But even the older, older owners or the owners who don't know really what their property is worth, they do have a good kind of guess, you know, yeah, yeah. yes, deals happen. Yes, it's possible, um, but it's not nearly as often as it would be in a more rural scenario. Well, I don't want to get us too far off track. Um, so you talked a little bit, uh, you talked about Mojo, how you're using Mojo. You talked about the CRM, how you're you're inputting everything into Boomtown uh, once you get the uh, qualifying information. The follow-up strategy, is it just a home evaluation and like neighborhood solds or what is the follow-up strategy in Boomtown? Do you guys have some sort of an email drip campaign system that goes out as well? Yeah, so that email drip, so to speak, the big part of that are just sending them comps, properties that are sold that are similar. Um, and again, that's set it and forget it type thing going out twice a month at minimum to people. So um, yeah, the, the way I look at it is if I were in their scenario, you know, on that initial call, I don't want to be bombarded with a million questions. You know, let's just start the relationship and then dive into it. Give me another call. Show me that you're following up. And there's people that, that do respect the hustle. And I would say, actually, you'd expect a lot of people to unsubscribe from the stuff that you're sending out. Yeah. Very, very, very few do. Yeah. Um, I like so, it. yeah, it's... um. It's the twice a month market update that's huge. And I think it's just the personal touch once a quarter. Um, and again, it's it's still relatively new and, and it's definitely stuff that I'm I'm working on how to how to dive deeper. But the follow up call is just a touch base. Hey, I know I've been sending these over to you. Um, if you had any thoughts on selling, we've got a couple clients looking, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. 
So are you noticing now being in your second year that some of the fruits of your labor are starting to pay off from the calls yeah. you made last year? A hundred thousand percent. And I think the, the key word that or two of them is consistency. Um, and as you said, it's it just grinding it out. Nobody's willing, at least I haven't found any people. If I do, that'd be phenomenal that are actually willing to put in the work and not see the benefits for those first six to eight months. Yeah. But after that, you know, you get the random phone call. Hey, I just saw this, this property sold. Can you get me X? And then you're going to try to jump in, set that appointment and, and lock them down. Yeah, absolutely, man. Another thing you mentioned, and we talked about nurtures and we talked about um, the follow-up strategy. Now the, the, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is like your daily goal. Like what is your daily goal? Um, so my daily goal, it has shifted just due to the amount of calls that I'm making. It's more time-based at this point. Um, like I'm going to be calling starting no later than 845. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to be going until one or two o'clock. And okay. in that, in that span though, I'm not doing anything else other than if you have a property owner that's calling you on a deal, but Nothing in this business really is we need it done on this second. Yes, yeah. you need to attend to it throughout the day, but it can wait an hour. It could wait two hours. And it's staying focused is, is the bigger goal. Um, if you're talking numbers, I'm trying to make at least six, 700 dials a day, 20 to 40 contacts, depending on if I'm doing follow-ups or if I'm just blanketing an area. Six, 700 calls a day, right? Yeah. Dude, that's great, man. Listen, yeah. man, that is that's speaking my language. I love it when somebody's willing to 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 put that type of work in. And there's there your success is not an accident, my friend. It is yeah. it is the result of the work you're putting in. And listen, the good thing about you right now is that you know you didn't do your deal and your first deal until eight months in, but yeah. you didn't quit. You didn't quit at month three, you didn't quit at month five, you didn't quit at month eight, man. You know what I mean? You you, you your first deal went through and now you've ne you, you don't have to look back, right? Because yeah. what's going to happen is if you continue to consistently lead generate every single day. In other words, you come in and you make five, six, seven, eight hundred calls. Your 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 buckets will always be full, and you will always you're you're always having a deal come to fruition. And I love to see the business run that way because really that's the only way you can scale a predictable revenue business is is to continue to lead generate, right? Yep, that's exactly right. And that's kind of what I was taught, you know, through Brett, through Eric, Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, whatever it is, is the way you win in this business is listing property. It's not representing home buyers. Um, to make this new coming in predictable, knowing if you make X amount of calls and have X amount of quality conversations, you'll get a listing out of it. So if that's yeah. your number, if it's right now, it's 39 for me. Every 39 contacts, I get an appointment. And then it depends on the quality of appointment and you dig deeper on that. But if I know right now, if I have 39 good conversations with different property owners, I'll be sitting face to face talking about how much their property's worth. Dude, that's, that's awesome, man. I love it. Yeah. Another thing you mentioned too, Danny, is that um, around one, um, just to kind of break up the day, is going to grab some lunch and then going to the gym. How important is that to you? Biggest part of my day. Um, okay. I would say a lot of people, you know, it's not as bad as you'd think on the rejection side. Yeah, it's a lot of no's, a lot of hanging up on you. There's not too many people that are cursing you out, so to speak. Yeah, um, yeah, it happens, but you're over the phone. Who cares? Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah you, I'm very high driver, go, go, go. Um, and that's why I need to go to the gym, cut out for a little bit and just not think of anything. You know, it, it, it's a big, big part of my day. That's great, man. That's great. So, you know, what, what the, like the end game for you, like what, what is it you really want to do? Like what, like if you, if, if you could, if I could paint a picture for you of success in real estate, like what, what would that be like in, you know, in five years or, or 10 years? Yeah. I mean, it's all financial freedom. That's what it comes down to. Um, I mean, my big, big goal is to do whatever I want, whenever I want. Um, that's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, but I would love to grow, you know, a bigger team as well. Brett and I are working on expanding, you know, make like a mini team out of the bigger picture and really yeah. not do massive agents, just do high quality 
yeah. um, and then just train them like crazy and, and just have them start producing. Um, so the bigger goal is to, you know, create a bigger team, get that revenue stream in, have that coming and then turn into the investment thing. So, you know, grind in your twenties, building your thirties, chill in your forties. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I love it, man. You got, you got the right mindset for sure. I am, um, I'm curious, like for you, did you, did you ever battle any demons? Like when, when it wasn't working, when, when you felt like, like, dude, this is like, I'm, I'm making all these freaking calls. Like it's not working. Were you ever battling any demons? Yeah. Every single day. If I could conference Brett in right now, I'd be like driving him nuts, but it, um, yes, it is. There's a short answer to that. Um, and the longer answer was just really trusting the process. Yeah. And it, it was understanding that you are with good people. You do see their vision. They want you to grow and you could take the easy way out and, you know, make decent money, so to speak, or you could pour gasoline on what you think will work and what you've been told will work and what everything tells you will work. And then the second that you taste it, you're like, wait, I'm not doing this for free. And then it keeps going and going and, and growing on top of that. Right. Um, and it's trusting the process, but yes, battling a lot of demons coming home after a long day and be like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it, you are, uh, you are one of a kind for sure, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's enlightening to see somebody like you at your age come into the business and just have, a um, the understanding that you do. Um, but it's no surprise really. You're working around really good guys. Brett's a great guy. I mean, Dave's a good guy. All those guys came up. Yeah you know, kind of the same way. And so it's when, when, when Brett told me about you, uh, I jumped at the chance to get you on because I think we need more people like you um, in the world of real estate, because um, I know not only will you do the best job for, you know, for yourself and for, you know, eventually for your family, but I know you'll do the best job for your clients as well. Yeah, absolutely. And a big part of that is, you know, there's a lot of people that will jump at that listing that's, 10% overpriced, 15% overpriced, just to have it up and feel like they're doing something. And there's listings that I don't get because, you know, it's very reality based. Here's your number. Here's what emotional based saying, Hey, you know, we think we could get you X and that's going to save you so much time on the back end. And at the start, I would have jumped on any listing possible. Yeah. Now it's like, all right, I'm taking this if I'm confident in selling it. And I think that's huge. And it's all about not wasting time. And I think that's what, you know, everything's got to come down to income producing activities. And if it's not getting you that next deal or helping that next client, it's not worth it. Yeah. So how much do you, how much time do you spend in training? How, how, how were you trained? Um, I was trained a lot of Mike Ferry internalizing scripts. Um, then kind of transition more in the Tom Ferry type things. And, and it's, it's all a product of Brett and Eric, honestly. Um, they're just putting you in the right hands and kind of guiding you in the right sense. I just started coaching. Actually, today was my first real day of, of having a, a true coach involved. Um, but, um, her name's Kelly. I mean, integrative coaching. Okay. Okay. Um, phenomenal. Great first session starting to do our team. Really, really loved it. Um, you know, kind of getting from this level, how do you get to that next level um, type of conversations? Yeah. But, you know, coaching was just listening to what Brett and Eric were saying works. You know, yeah. they're, they're both smart guys, investment minded. Don't take any bullshit. Yeah. When do you feel like you really started to get it dialed in? Um, I would say March of this year, uh, um, okay. March 2019. I started feeling it last. So last June was my first closing. Yeah. Um, and it started working. It was it was a good second half to 2018. But I'd say spring 2019 was was definitely the big push of like, wow, you could actually make some some good money doing this and and helping people along the way. You know, getting them to get their goals as well. It's not just, you know, being that guy that'll sell their property. It's a true like consultant role, so to speak, yeah. you know, it, and it comes down to, know, you know, you're not messing around and you're not saying we can do it for X. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it for this number. 
and we'll get it done. Yeah. What's been a bigger hurdle for you, being 24 or being a new agent? It's a good question. Probably being a new agent. Um, I don't think age matters, especially, you know, I hate to say it, the competitions, the top, the best of the best are great. You know, the, the temp, the 10% that do 90% of the business, they're good. They're strong. But the other 90% of those people, you know, aren't the big driver. Here's what it's going to do. They're going to let the client kind of walk all over them and let them set the terms. On the yeah. flip side, we're going to start that meeting and it's going to go through our process starting right here. And here's how we're going to do it. You enter you out. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. And so being, being a new agent, what kind of, what kind of, um, objections did you run into and how did you overcome them? Um, honestly, not many are age related. Um, I don't think many people actually know that I'm 24. A lot of them will think older, later twenties, which, which I'm all for. Um, newest agent stuff is really learning the, business, learning the deal cycle. I think it's, I think the biggest part is patience. Um, yeah. That was, that still is to this day, um, my biggest hurdle, you know, mindset. I know I'll outwork you. I know I'll present better than you will. That's not a concern of mine. It's the patient game. Why? Like I've got, let's see, 600 contract and five on the market as we speak. Mm -hmm. And that's just not enough. It's that consistent drive of, all right, where's that next one coming from? How are we finding that next deal? You know, where, where is it being sourced from and, and all those good things. But patience is the, the biggest hurdle. I know the answer to this already, but I want the audience to hear this. What is the most important thing you do every day? The most important? Yeah. Um, I, I'd say it's just consistency. In, in what, though? The calling. There you go. And That's it. Pick up, pick up the phone, and yeah, it's lead generation, and it's all feeding your system, feeding your CRM, treating it like a living creature, not letting. Because I'm not getting every listing that I talk to. Yeah. You, know? you know, there's people who are set; they're working with this broker or that broker, and that's the way it's always going to be, and that's fine. You know, I'm jumping into the new market. It's not like it's the other way around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pick up the phone and, and feed the beast. Love it, man. I love it. And and I think, um, you know, why that's the only reason I wanted to ask you that question is because one thing I know about you is that you treat that time as a, as a sacred time. In other words, that's like an appointment for you. You would never try to schedule an appointment during that time unless you absolutely had to, because you look at it as it as already having an appointment. Am I right? It's exactly right. It's um, that's never changing. No one's interrupting that. I'm not scheduling meetings throughout that. Um, you know, my meetings take place between four and whenever the weekday ends. And the key part is that weekday. I'm not going in the office. I'm not presenting on Saturday or Sunday. And people, I think that's a big hurdle for a newer agent to think that, you know, we're going to work on their times and we're going to schedule whenever they want and whenever they're ready. But yeah. if you flip it on them and say, here are my hours, here's when I meet with clients, they'll find the time to make it fit. Yeah, yeah. My, can I be going at eight or nine o'clock at night during the week? Sure, but what does that matter to me? Yeah. You know, it's going 100% Monday through Friday. Yeah, and, and how, like, I, the, the great thing about the, your situation is you came into a situation where you got around some good quality people, but how important was was it for you to join a company like e EXP? Phenomenal. Um, I think from a compensation standpoint, a growth standpoint, you know, the traditional brokerage is just fading. Like when was the last time someone went into an office and said, I'm going to pick this one? You know, it, it's all about that, that new technology. And my favorite part when I was, when we were looking into EXP was it's that blockbuster to Netflix transition. Um, and we're really the first people in that space. Um, and, and people don't care. Yes, we do have a brick and mortar office here, um, but people don't care where the office is. It, it's the content and what you're delivering and what you're telling them that you're going to get done. Right. Um, EXP overall, I think from a revenue share standpoint and a downline standpoint is insanely phenomenal. Um, that's a big goal of mine is to grow that. But again, grow that with just the right people. You know, it's not going to be trying to get everyone and anyone in. It's going to be getting the people who are willing to put in the work 
and just be aligned with them. But yeah, Evernie, XPYs, Brett, Dave, you, you know, all very like-minded people. Love it, brother. Love it, man. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. If um, if someone in our audience wants to connect with you, if they have questions about, you know, the systems you use or how you use them or, you know, they have questions about EXP, how do they get in touch with you, Danny? Yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn, just um, look up Daniel Spitz. You should see it on there. Email um, Dan at lwithsecora.com, S-E-L-L-W-I-T-A. Hopefully I didn't lose you, buddy. You still there? Well, without fail, more technology issues. Good thing it was at the end of the show. Danny, pleasure having you on. As always, I could literally talk for hours about lead generation. I love sharing these stories uh, with guys like Danny, uh, 24 years old, on track to do what, $18 million in his second year in real estate. Um, we will be posting this over at our uh, the Agent Factory website and, as always, on Live Real Estate Coaching with Mike Wall. We'll be on the road this month on November 21st down in Cincinnati for our uh, six-figure yeah, class. What happened there? Danny, welcome back, brother. I'm just kind of wrapping up the podcast here. Cool. Uh, let me finish my outro real quick, and then I'll, I'll have you give your contact information again. Um, everybody that's watching, do me a big favor. Um, go on over to uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, and please subscribe, um, and then make sure you give us a great five-star review. Um, if you have any questions or want to jump on a free call with me, go to meetmikewall.com. Real quick, Danny, once again, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, LinkedIn, Dan at sellwithsecora.com, S-E-L-L. W-I-T-H-S-I-K-O-R-A.com or phone 201-600-6493. My man. All right, brother. Listen, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, don't be a stranger. And uh, Absolutely. I look, Appreciate it, buddy. I look, I look forward to seeing the, your trajectory, your growth, man. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. Danny, thanks.